to this world title featured attraction brought to you by Don King Productions, St. Ives Gold, and the Las Vegas Hilton. Before we begin this action, on behalf of the defending world champion, we ask you to rise for the singing of the national anthem of Mexico. To lead us, ladies and gentlemen, please. He weighed in at the strongweight limit of 105 pounds. His record includes 20 wins, only one defeat, six wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the WBC number 10 strawweight contender in the world. Please welcome tonight's challenger, Monko Charon. And presenting his opponent across the ring on my left, the world champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with green and red trim, fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in the same as his opponent, the limit of 105 pounds, with a record of 44 wins, no losses. He has 34 wins, coming by way of knockout. Truly one of the great pound-for-pound -pound boxers, he holds the longest undefeated streak among champions today, making his unprecedented 19th defense of his title. Please welcome the king of the strawweights, the WBC strawweight champion of the world, the undefeated Ricardo Vinito Lopez. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Since neither one of you speak any English, I'll be in, I'll ask for your interpreter here, your interpreter here, okay? Are there any questions here? Twelve rounds, the WBC Mortal Tile. Let's go to work. Good luck. It's the best I could do. All right, Jane 80 saying, hey, it's the best I can do. <laughs> Ricardo Lopez, 6-0 and versus Southpaws with six knockouts. Uh, Sharon is a lefty. He's got eight straight knockout wins overall, 14 of the last 15 fights, 16 in his last 19 world title fights. And there's Mongol Sharon, the soft-spoken 18-year-old uh, from Thailand, said he knows how dangerous Lopez is. Nevertheless, he plans to walk right in and be the aggressor. We'll see. That could be a big mistake. Oh, the first part of that sentence is right. Walk right in. <laughs> the second part is and get Sit knocked right out. Down. <laughs> All right, we're getting set for round one. Get for twelve. The WBC Strawweight Championship. The thing about Lopez, of course, is he, he needs name recognition, uh, like a Michael Carbajal is a, a guy he should fight. Perhaps uh, he's walking around at about 107 pounds. Why not go up to 112 or even 150? Here we go. Look at that beautiful pose. He comes out in striking fashion. Uh, Bobby, Bobby said even in the gym, you see this guy still holding his his hands up. He did it all during his warm up. He had his guard up the whole the whole time. You see guys with their hands down. He's got it up. I mean, this guy is he no, is in perfect. theory when you draw something up. He does what you draw up. And yeah. It's just amazing that he can maintain that every time out. He keeps telling us, I'm not a one-punch knockout artist. But he keeps knocking guys out with one punch and early. And well, you know what? He doesn't consider himself a great big banger, but his timing and execution are perfect. Brings a wealth of ex experience. Uh, epitomizes the term sweet to science. A true craftsman. Tremendous combination puncher. He does have that one-punch power, but as Bobby points out, timing is of the essence. Excellent defensive fighter. Just a, a brilliant ring technician, so disciplined. He's a, a scientific fighter. He's, he's, he has the patience. Oh, look at that. He has the patience to wait for the opening. He has the intelligence to see the opening, and then the delivery is perfect. He has three uh, first-round uh, knockouts uh, to his credit, including his last fight over uh, South Korean Myung Sub Park, December 7th in Indio, California. Well, Longo Charon did not come out. And he <laughs> did come out and come to Lopez, but he didn't come out just you know, blatantly firing punches and getting a mix-up. So as soon as we get to a nice give or take, a little repartee, we're going to find out what kind of chin he's got because he's going to need one tonight. Well, he's not, he's not going to begin to beat Lopez by just standing there taking his punches. No, he's got to get in. He's got to work his way. He's got to land some punches. He seems to have a little bit of uh, a nice style for Southwest, some nice movement, a little bit of an Americanized style, which I like. He fights Muay Thai, which is a very rugged uh, form of kickboxing, which uh, says gives him strength all over his body. He feels that uh, while Lopez, pretty good straight left by there by Sharon, while Lopez is uh, so great, so dangerous uh, that if he has 
one uh, weakness. It's in his upper body strength. But we'll see if he could uh, get that close, penetrate. He's been in Las Vegas only five days, Sharon, after a 25-hour flight. He's had some problems adjusting, including headaches. He's bleeding from the nose a little bit right now, so some of the punches that Lopez is throwing are getting through. Sharon said to us yesterday he feels no pressure, no excitement going into this fight. Extremely soft-spoken at 18. I found it very odd that he said Lopez is smart, is a sharp puncher, extremely talented and very dangerous, but I'm going to walk right to him. Yeah. I, I thought he might be a little more cautious given that he understood how dangerous Lopez a is. A byproduct of that is the bloody nose sustained by uh, Sharon. Well, it's already bleeding pretty good, too. Lopez, he's sharp, he's accurate, he's consistent, and he's not going to ever stop that and calm. thing. Very, uh, never over-anxious. Very patient. Final seconds in the opening round. Well, our translator once again, John Perez in Ricardo Lopez. Corner. Use the left. Use the left. Well, he's, he's, he said something basically like, keep going with straight right hands, and if he bites on it, then he'll take the pipe. I didn't think take the pipe was a Spanish. Interesting. I didn't think take the pipe was a Spanish colloquialism. Uh, Universal, I guess. Yeah. Round two. <laughs> Put your right hand in there, and then he'll take the fight. Okay. Ignacio Berestain, who has trained several world champions. Nacho. Yep. Nice man, Nacho. Good corner man, patient. Good, good instruction. Also the uh, cut man. Ricardo Lopez, 29 years old. 11 years older than uh, Mongol Sharon. And there you see Sharon a couple of times trying to make the counters, trying to block and fire. But Ricardo, he's ready for everything. Lopez said this is the seventh lefty he's fought. He's KO'd each of the previous six. Said he'll duck both ways, reverse his hands, wait for the opening against uh, Southpaw Sharon. He's seen tapes of uh, the, the Thai fighter. He thought he was strong. Keeps his guard up. Nothing fancy. But the Southpaw stance, he says, will not bother him. Uh, in, in the interviews yesterday, one of us foolishly said to him, well, what are you going to do different to, to fight this left hand? He said, I fought seven and knocked out seven. I didn't think I'd do anything different. I said, oops, I'm sorry. Well, how do you improve upon the infection? <laughs> There's a little uppercut that starts bleeding again that's been knocking out all these guys that we've seen. An uppercut from outside, a strange shot machine. I'll tell you what, Sharon's taking a couple of good left uppercuts, a couple of good straight rights down the middle, and one or two hooks, pretty solid, and... Although his nose is bleeding, he has shown no real ill effects. Yet. Yeah. Glad you added that. Straight right hand by uh, Lopez, but he started it too far back. It just met leather. Combination by Lopez, but uh, the elusive Sharon able to get away from that. Remember, most of these fights go two, three rounds until in the corner they kind of unleash him. You know, say, okay, now you know where to go. Go do it. And, and uh, Thank goodness, because he gives us two or three rounds to admire his perfection. You know, I almost get the feeling, too, that he unleashes himself when he's ready, when he's when felt he sees, what he needs to feel. When, when he sees what, he's, what he needs and where he's going, then he goes. The overriding theme here tonight has been frustrating that he doesn't go up. A ball three, three pounds, talking about Lopez, to fight the top junior flies, or even seven pounds to take on the flyweight. But... Uh, Keep in mind, back in 93, he scored a second-round TKO over current WBC light flyweight champ, Saman Soya Tarong of Thailand. Which gives you a pretty good idea that he might be successful there, too. Yes. And, you know, some guys were very successful staying in the same lightweight class their entire careers. Uh, Jeff Chandler, remember him? Carlos Zarate, Galaxy. They stayed in one uh, area. Less than 10 seconds, round two. 
Lopez owns the longest undefeated streak among present world champions. Let's go over to uh, Jim Gray right now. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm now joined by Bruce Willis. Bruce, here doing? for the fights this evening. Good. How are you doing? Real good. Real good. What do you think of the fights coming up here tonight? You're a big fight fan. I like this fight right here. Anybody coming into the ring against Ricardo Lopez, 44 wins. Got to be, got to kind of have a little ice in his veins. Got to, I mean, I'm surprised it went too. I thought it was going to, I thought it was going to be over, you know, the first round. I like this kid. He looks like a young uh, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Academy Awards the other night. Anything surprise you? And what's your next project coming Academy up? Academy Awards. Academy Awards is a pretty interesting show. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not much on those dance numbers in the <laughs> Academy Awards. You know, they always say run out of time and stop the actors from talking. But I think they ought to cut those dance numbers down, folks. Take it from Bruce Willis, your old pal. You working on anything? I'm unemployed right now, collecting unemployment, buck 25 every two weeks. I don't think America will buy that. With that, let's go back to Steve Albert. Thanks, Bruce. Come on, Ricardo. All right. Thank you very much. Interesting uh, note uh, by uh, Mr. Willis because Ricardo Lopez befriended Julio Cesar Chavez and Chavez turned him over to uh, Don King and then uh, started getting bigger and bigger fights, getting on big cards, and uh, Lopez does have his uh, good buddy uh, Chavez to thank uh, for some of his success. Well, it's one of the things I say when I speak uh, to people about boxing. The wonderful thing is a guy that weighs 105 pounds can be a champion, be, make himself a millionaire, and what other sport can we see a little tiny guy be the best in the entire sport. Be horse I mean. racing. That's about justice. Yeah, I know, but they're only little. Watch out now. Keep the head up. Uh, the warning from Jane 80 to Mongol Sharon. There's going to be a little bit of an attrition factor starting to apply soon. Sharon's face is starting to get a little red and ugly. He's, you know, nose is bleeding, but he's taking a lot of the shots. Lopez is zeroing in. Now you see there's no more forward movement by Sharon. It's all Ricardo Lopez stalking. Yeah, this is kind of a survival fight here. Not so much. Uh, I'm going to try to win here. Lopez uh, saying one of his goals is to go 88 and 0. He's now 44 and 0 as a pro. His friend, uh, Mr. Chavez, was 87 and 0 before his first blemish, the the controversial draw with Pernell Whitaker. Although many people thought that uh, wow. Chavez lost that fight. Look out now. 88 and 0 is going to be a long haul. Yeah. He, well, he has to fight every 28 days. Oh, <laughs> like I said, a long haul. Yeah. Lopez uh, beginning to uh, oh. come on now. Ooh, that re see, that left uppercut is so uh, devastating. It is so, such a ripping punch. I, I, since Carmen Basilio, I keep saying his left uppercut, it was just, just that's what I used to watch Basilio for. And this guy's got the same thing. Just takes your head off with it. Look at it. He has such excellent leverage. Takes it, starts in the right place, and drives it up. Beautiful. And master of the uppercut. Ricardo Lopez. And he knows how to finish. He's the package. I mean, you sit here and you say to yourself, gosh, I would love to see him fight as a welter. Wouldn't I have loved to see a guy with a skill as a I'd love to see him fight as a heavyweight. Oh, I mean, you know, you keep thinking, you keep thinking a, a heavyweight with a skill. Well, we saw one like that. I don't, think anyone could even, Ali. I don't think anyone could even fantasize this man as a heavyweight. It's just too much to, too mean, much well, to think about. It would be like an Ali. It's like, like dancing punching everything perfect there's no doubting his uh, brilliance his exceptional skills in the ring but the uh, the naysayers the detractors uh, still contend that he's got to start unifying the title or move up in weight yeah, but I think that's not his fault it was a point to Don King as managers and, well, it's and, not his fault he's a yeah. little guy but yeah. and not his fault that that class doesn't have that many great fighters either. certainly Gee, I'm mad at my mom and dad because I'm only 5'10 <laughs> Final seconds of round three. We're going to hear from the uh, the Thai corner, Mongo Sharon, with our translator, Let Bang Lam Poo. Good evening. The fight went so very, very tough. It's ongoing. Yeah, but I'm observing the sound, the sound, the voices from the blue corner, the Mongo Jalan's corner. Oh. Looks like uh, Mongo Jaro is now in uh, a little uh, recovery from uh, the, ble the bleeding nose. He's going to be more active, the cornerman said. Is there a cut here? No, no, no. No, no. Yeah, I'm inside there's a cut there. 
Well, like that's it. You've got to be more active. The words of Virat Malilur, the head trainer in Mongo Sharon's corner. A very uh, fresh uh, Ricardo Lopez ready to begin round four. It's scheduled for 12 for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Lopez in the white trunks and Sharon in the, the gold with the red trim. Sharon all the way from Thailand. A flight of uh, better than 25 hours. He's only been in Las Vegas for about five days, and that has to take its toll. You know, flying through all those time zones, that, that lengthy, lengthy flight, the fatigue factors involved, it's got to take at least three to four days to get acclimated, and then, and then he had to train a little bit here. And your destination uh, is uh, Las Vegas, and it's like landing on another planet. Let's check the online scoring from our... Uh, our home viewers so far, no surprise. Lopez, three rounds to nothing here in round four. I was hoping it wasn't going to be any different than that. <laughs> yeah, we lose faith in the American public if anybody saw this guy win, win a round. One minute gone by in the fourth. Lopez, his 19th title defense. He won the title in October of 90 with a fifth-round knockout of Hideyuki Owashi in Tokyo, Japan. You know, it's almost impossible to keep your balance at every twist at every turn every bend Lopez seems to be able to do it he throws a punch he slips a punch no matter where he is he's on balance and he's positioned to punch so difficult uh, we talked about the recognition factor so difficult for many of them to get recognition in the United States because most of these uh, smaller weight class uh, fighters are not Americans. Well, do you doubt for one second that if, if Showtime wasn't, wasn't featuring Lopez as great as he is and magnificent as he is, would anybody have heard of him in the United States? Great fighters have come and gone, but we've never seen them. We've never seen them. All during my time in, in boxing, we never saw the little guys. I mean, we read about them, we heard about them, but we never saw them. The heavyweights still rule. Well... I think that's changing with television a little bit. You know, they do rule, but uh, we are seeing other fights. Lopez has had almost as many championship fights as Sharon has had fights, period. Lopez has had 18, uh, 19 title defenses. Sharon has had 21 fights. Now, to his credit, to his credit, Sharon is trying to get that straight left underneath. He's not bringing the punches up, though. If he's going to come in and gamble, he might as well take the gamble all the way. Well, just the fact that he's here is, is pretty good. And, uh, you know, he's getting his confidence up. He's not getting beaten up by any chance. He's, I mean, he's he's doing all right. Uh, better than the ones we usually see fighting uh, Lopez. It's already going longer than a lot of people thought it would. Final seconds of round four. And coming up next, a scheduled 10-round welterweight bout featuring the return to showtime of six-time world champion Julio Cesar Chavez. Here he is in his dressing room. He weighed in at 151. That's an all-time career high for Julio. Going for his 99th win. An incredible career that spans 17 years. Belts in three different weight classes. A lot of cheering, a lot of noise. A lot of rooting going on in that uh, locker room, that dressing room. Certainly not what he used to be, but... He will go down as one of the all-time best at 34 on a mission to regain the title. He meets Tony Martin in a non-title bout up next. Back here at the Las Vegas Hilton, and it has filled up pretty, pretty well. The capacity here is uh, 8,000. They were expecting about 5,000. Just a little bit. All right. There's that pose of Ricardo Lopez as he gets set to resume round number five. You know what's really odd was Sharon had his hands up the exact same way. He's learning from the king. It's a hell of a way to go to school, Steve. Yeah. So round five scheduled for 12. First world title shot for Sharon. First fight in the U.S. He is uh, the current WBF, something called the WBF 108-pound uh, World Boxing Champ. Federation. Right. No, I know what it stands for. I'm not sure what it means, but in terms of importance, this is a uh, left hook. It's another one of the WBO, WBU, IBC, IBO yeah. world titles. Left hook by uh, Ricardo Lopez landed to the side of Sharon's face. 
Oh, those hooks are crunching in. His yeah. ear is getting red on, the, on that right side and swollen. You see it? Focus. Beautiful body shot comes up top. Never forgets both the head and the body. That's how you used to get cauliflower ears before they open them up and took the blood out. I mean, once you get pounded and blood goes into the cartilage, you got to get it out or else you end up with a cauliflower ear, which you don't see anymore. Although my mother in law did it. <laughs> oh, stop. No, another mother. Not, 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 not the one I like. <laughs> stop it. No, 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 no. Sharon, no, that's a slip. Box. Lopez with a uh, swing and a miss with the straight right hand, trying to end it on one punch stop. there, but uh, Sharon stepped stop. away. Punch is up. He's starting to wear Sharon down here. Those punches are getting heavier and heavier from Lopez. I see, rather than lose every round pretty much one sided, Sharon should take a game when he gets inside, take a shot, and maybe cause a firefight. But he, does, he doesn't have the guns. Five, six knockouts and 20 wins. Uh, he just doesn't have the guns to compete with this man. Sharon 20 and 1 with six knockouts, but so uh, difficult to uh, confirm, verify uh, the record. Who he's fought in terms of quality, but he's hanging in there pretty, uh, pretty well. The southpaw against the uh, beautiful technician Ricardo Lopez. That's also another big problem at 105 pounds. There isn't a lot of quality, period. And oh, certainly sure. the quality at this level for for a Lopez level is pretty much non-existent. There's a pretty combination by Lopez, right on the money, right on the head. Oh, that sent uh, Lopez back. That's the first good shot I've seen land on Lopez. When was the last time we saw that? Ricardo Lopez going back from a punch. Good shot. He got time coming in with a straight left hand. I say this is very impressive by the Thai challenger to this point, Mongo Sharon. Around five, we'll take it into uh, Lopez's corner. John Perez is our interpreter. It's very uh, calm on that corner right now. Not too much being said, Steve. Uh, get in some water. He's right there for you. He's right there for you. He's, 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 he's wide open for the uppercuts. One of the rare times that Ricardo Lopez ever walks into a punch, kind of gets caught uh, maybe a little off guard, straight left hand. Bangs him, goes straight backwards. There it is, right on the middle of the bridge of the nose, forehead area. Sends him back for a brief split second. Yeah. But something we don't normally see. A lot of blood. I'm surprised they haven't washed that off to some degree all over the face of uh, Sharon. Sixth round. Well, we're almost past the halfway point. Not many thought it would be this far. Ricardo Lopez is the kind of guy that you would think never makes the same mistake twice. He rarely makes a mistake the first time. So I think you'll just see him. Just maybe pay a little closer attention. Well, we were exasperating the corners, and the guy is wide open for your uppercut while you're waiting for. And it just may uh, get Lopez back into uh, a little bit of a killer mode here. Ignacio Verstein uh, urging Lopez on to use that uppercut, and he has one of the best in the business. And he just used one of them, too. He threw a straight right, and he ripped the left up, and it busted his nose, and started the blowing, excuse me, the blood flowing once again. There's a beautiful defensive move by Lopez. Did you see that? He just eluded a straight right hand by Sharon. Well, Sharon uh, living up to uh, what he, he told us. He's trying to step in, moving in just like now. Dick Eddie left felt, uppercut to the body by Lopez. He felt toughened and can well conditioned from Muay, Muay Thai. Right. But no one's kicking him in the shins or anywhere else today. He's just all upstairs. There seems to be some blood on his forehead, too. Do you see it? Right in the hairline, right just above the hairline where it's on his forehead, there seems to be some blood. There's that uppercut. It didn't land right, but there it is. Halfway through round six. Scheduled for 12 for the WBC Strawweight Championship.
Earlier, Alex Sanchez uh, beat Victor Burgos for the WBO mini flyweight or 105 pound title. So many feel that uh, that might set up a unification bout with, with uh, Lopez. Now, Alex didn't exactly cover himself with glory or demand to fight with this guy off of that fight. I mean, he he, he was lucky to win at the end and pull that out. No, but still would be a very attractive fight. Yeah, it would. It would, Bobby. I, I'm saying there are no headlines screaming for it after that fight. We approach the final 30 seconds of round six. Well, Lopez coming from way low for that uppercut. Yeah. Almost from the heels of his feet. You know, he's sometimes just so pretty to watch. You don't even want to talk about it. You just want to sit back and not be in awe, but be close to it. It makes everything look so easy, Steve. It's incredible. It, it might be in slow motion in his eyes when he sees things coming towards him, almost like Ted Williams saw baseball. He is the Joe DiMaggio of boxing. Classy guy. Let's check the bleeding out. Like Bang Lampu, our translator. The nose, the nose is still bleeding. But I didn't see it. It says it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Now the uh, the chief the chief second the trainer of Virat is uh, taking away the blood. And what I heard, he said, uh, if you don't if you don't think that you could defend all the punches thrown from the, the other side, you cannot make the knife. Uh, the second said. Uh, be intelligent. Be intelligent. Use your brain. The other guys do talk. Too intelligent. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Lech. I'm just a little surprised that uh, he's saying be intelligent, be intelligent. But Bobby, if you're that fighter in the corner, there's so much going on in your mind at this point. Wouldn't you like a little more guidance on that? What should I do to be intelligent? Yeah. Sometimes be smart or be intelligent. Your trainer will say to you when you're doing silly things that you shouldn't be doing, be smart. You know, don't fight that type of fight. But here, he's going to need some guidance because I'm sure he's doing everything he can. And I'll tell you what, yeah, be smart right here might actually mean just you should stay at home. Well, let me tell you, I admire anybody who gets on a plane and flies 25 hours to fight anybody. Uh, you know, if you're in a completely foreign country, everything completely different, and get in the ring and, and fight a guy that's as good as Ricardo Lopez takes a lot of guys. Round seven, there's a straight right hand by Ricardo Lopez that uh, sent Sharon reeling back. How about the uh, scores at the halfway point on official? Well, how uh, do you say shut out in uh, uh, <laughs> tie? Ask Lex. 60 to 54. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a goose egg. It's a donut. Under two minutes in round seven for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez coming up next in a non title bout. Against Tony Martin, then of course Michael Moore will defend his IBF heavyweight championship against Vaughn Bean. Untested. Straight right, but that was blocked nicely by Sharon. Sharon showing pretty good defense. Halfway through round seven. Here's a barrage by Lopez throwing everything at Sharon. Lopez stepped it up there. He, he gave his signal that maybe he's ready to. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's an first, abrupt end. That's the first time I, I saw the killer mode. And then the, the, let's get it over with mode. That's the first time I saw that. In this Sharon's never been down. Of course, Lopez has never been down, pro or amateur. He's never lost a fight, pro or amateur. 44 and 0 is a pro. 40 and 0 is an amateur. I'd be real interested to see how many rounds he's lost. <laughs> Good point. He just doesn't lose many. Oh, low blow by stop, stop. Ricardo Lopez with a left uppercut and being warned by Jay Nady. Nice combination by Ricardo Lopez. To the body of uh, Sharon. Uh, 
That was blocked, that left hook by Sharon by the right glove of Lopez. Lopez with a digging straight right, right uppercut right to the body. Into the stomach. Nice straight hand lead, right hand lead. Lopez continues to score. There's, There's the uppercut. uppercut. Yeah. That's the one who's been working all night. Spiraling uppercut. It was partially blocked, though, by uh, Sharon. We go back into the uh, Lopez corner. John Perez, the translator. Ricardo, está listo. Ricardo, he's ready. He's ready to go. You have, to, you have the instinct. You know what you have to do. He's ready to go. Lopez working like he does always, head and body. Let's one fly. Boom. A little south of the border. Certainly not intentional. That's just not the type of fighter he is. That's it. Mongo Sharon, they finally got all that blood out of the way there. I don't know if it's going to start up again, but at least they cleaned it up as we enter round eight. And uh, you may have heard uh, Ignacio Beristain uh, say, all right, now it's time to Ricardo Lopez. Really, it's time to take him out now, guy. Okay? Let's see what happens. Yeah, he said you're hitting him from all angles. Just come right on up the middle and knock him out. Let's check the online scoring again. They gave a round to Sharon. Is that one guy, or is there like a lot of people have done it? They gave him round five. Interesting. All right. I don't know my game. This is round eight, scheduled for 12 at the WBC Strawweight Championship. I would be very interested to see what the judges have right now, too, so I haven't been right all night about anything. Well, let's see. Your judges, Carol Castellano, Las Vegas, Horacio Castillo from Colombia, South America, Martin Salmon, Santa Clara, California. You'd be hard-pressed to justify any round for Sharon. Hard-pressed. Here's that right uppercut. Uh, didn't do much damage, though, by uh, local. Oh, a left hook, a lunging left hook by Mongol Sharon, who's winning some fans over here, obviously because of uh, being the underdog. Not only is he an underdog, but he's an underdog that's taking out a lick and he keeps on taking. He oh. comes back in, he's come to fight. No serious damage done. Straight left hand by Sharon again. It startles Lopez. It sent him back. Not only startled him, it looked like it buckled his leg. That, that, is, that would have been interesting. Well, there's something we have not seen in a while. We may have a story developing here, but who knows? Blood all over the back of the trunks of Lopez, but that's from Sharon's nose and head. Stop. Right now, Lopez hasn't Stop. lit it up. This might put a little fire under him to close the show a little better, but at the same time, he's just doing everything perfectly, not over-exhausting himself, not overdoing anything. Less than a minute remaining in round eight. Interesting round by the uh, Thai fighter, Mongol Sharon. He actually made Lopez's knees buckle momentarily. From a straight shot, sent him back. I think that may be the first time I ever saw him buckle. It'll be interesting to talk to uh, Lopez after this fight. Get his feelings on uh, what we just saw. I'm not sure it was a full buckle. It wasn't a bad shot, though. That I'll tell you. I don't know. He could have come in, taken this kid lightly. He's only 18 years old. Probably you know, saying in his head, this guy's not going to do anything. And then you let down a little bit. Only human. John Perez, our translator again. No, 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 no. He's not falling. I have too much being said right now. That little bit of a, might be like a little cut back there. That's it. It's quiet. Let's take a good look, Bobby. Take a good look at the legs and let's see if, if we can get to the legs. The shot is there. 
Now you see, you couldn't, you didn't see him, but you uh, see you know, him. I don't back. really think it was a full buckle. If you watch Half close, took but, another but, angle at it, and you'll watch. He was just kind of leaning away, I think, a little bit. And uh, now there, we not, still not really a buckle. No, right there, Bobby. They went. They they, they went, Bobby. We, and you just couldn't see on that thing. Maybe I think too much half. of them, but I'm just not sold on that buckle. Well, well, we'll make a deal. It's a half buckle. Expectations, of course, are so high when it comes to the subject of Ricardo Lopez. So any any little setback, any little blemish is going to be uh, like under the microscope. As you went back to the corner, Lopez had a bloody nose as well. Yep. And what, what was the interesting uh, words in that corner? He's not falling. Lopez's corner two is very quiet. They're either completely satisfied or disinterested. I'm not sure that they can be disinterested and still be doing their job. Or satisfied. And, or like I said, or they're just completely satisfied and they're happy with everything. Or they've just never haven't been in this position in so long. They're they're speechless, dumbfounded. Don't well, know what to say. You have those nights when it doesn't happen and you're in a corner with a great champion and you're saying, Why don't you do it? And he said, I can't. It doesn't happen. I mean it happened to Ali a number of times. Well we just sat there and watched him play with an inferior opponent. In befuddlement. About a minute gone by in round nine. Lopez trying to strike with that straight right in and out. There's a left hook to the uh, side of the body by Lopez. That had to hurt. Now Lopez beginning to open accommodation to the head. Well, Sharon's stock has certainly gone up at least in toughness. Now we get a little documentation that he can take a shot and he'll be there for a while. If he gets a little more offensive power to his repertoire, he might have actually something to do in his division shortly down the road. Well, he's not a knockout puncher. He's 20 and 1 with six knockouts. Lopez 44 and 34 KOs. But giving a very uh, impressive showing here against the longtime champion Ricardo Lopez. More for his defense than anything else. Able to elude some of those uh, tough punches by Lopez. Ducking moves side to side. Very quick, straight right hand by Lopez that snuck right between the gloves of Sharon in the face. Lopez able to keep away defensively from Sharon. Sharon, again, eating a straight left from Lopez. Lopez has a sneaky lead right hand, too. He kind of leans in with it, and he, he's very, very accurate with it most of the time, but it's just sneaky. How about the blood well, along the, the right side blood? of Lopez's face yeah, near the eye? He just felt it himself. He said, what's going on here? Oh, my, look at that, and it looks like a nasty cut. I think they might have banged heads in Arrow's elbow because he wasn't here with anything that clean. He could rip open and cut that big. And the Sharon uh, corner coming alive. They noticed the cut, obviously. And it, it sounds like a bullfight in that corner. Well, if, if, if ever he opened up, he's going to open up now. That does not look like a good cut because it's, I think it's over the eye. And, of course, that can get into the eye and blur your vision. It'll be a distraction. It's something he's not really that used to. Well, we got to see when we get in that corner right. with the C in there. One of the very... Uh, Good things I was always blessed with. No matter what you hit me with, I didn't cut. I swelled up a bit, but I didn't cut. Now let's key in on this. Let the doctor look at him. Yes. Let's go have the doctor look at yes, it. Yes, in English. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. There's not much being said right now, Steve. Just close your eye. Close your eye. That's not bad. Relax. Just relax. Just close your eye. That's a butt, right, Jay? Not much being said right now, though. Just working on that cut. Okay. Jab, jab, use your combinations. Otro poquito. Uh oh. We're taking one point away from this fighter for a butt. Yeah, there it is. One They're taking point a point away a from the headbutt, uh, resulting in the uh, cut. Time in. Over the right eye of uh, Ricardo Lopez, Dr. Flip Pomansky uh, looked in. So no, uh, no real problem there, but uh, they have to do that anyway. Oh boy. Caron coming in, uh, oh. trying to end it right here, showing a uh, sense of urgency. For the first time tonight, his, he is the offender, uh, offensive fighter. Look at him, boy, he is. They lit a fire on the throne. 
and for the first time in in the time I've seen him, I saw him look skyward as uh, I'm talking about uh, Lopez. Look skyward before the round, like saying, "Okay, help me get this thing through." I mean, that's well, you know, they ruled it a headbutt, so if he stopped on the cut, he doesn't lose on the cut. So that's out. I don't think he has the tools, the power, or the wherewithal to knock Lopez out. And we're in round ten. As mentioned, Sharon with only six knockouts and 20 wins, 21 fights. But here is Sharon chasing Ricardo Lopez. Now, that's unusual. Now, we've not seen that. We've not seen him run from anybody. The odds are, of course, not with Sharon here in terms of a, a knockout, but he is the obvious aggressor here against the uh, longtime champion, undefeated Ricardo Lopez. Oh, uh, a heavy right hook as he was turning away, and Sharon nailing Lopez. Now, I wonder if the cut has really disrupt, disrupted Lopez that much. He, he just seems that he wants to let the cut heal. And Look out. That was a uh, tangling of the feet okay. and a push by Sharon. Don't do that. And he went, <laughs> don't do that, <laughs> says Jay Nady. Naughty boy. I don't, I don't recall that instruction in the booklet. WBC rule uh, stating that uh, when there's an accidental uh, headbutt resulting in a cut, well, I'm, they I'm, take a point away from the guy who, who is not injured. Jerome does have an excellent chin. I just saw a nice double left hand, uppercut and hook twice in a row. All four punches landed clean. He didn't even blink. Things beginning to heat up here now as the crowd was chanting Lopez, trying to urge him on. They did a nice job on that cut. It doesn't seem to be bothering uh, Lopez. Boy, Jerome could take a punch. I mean, he got hit. He got hit some hard. Some of those finished the fight punches right just. Now. He's got a strong body, and he attributes that to the Muay Thai. Uh, whatever it is, I, I, anything they eat that makes them that strong is good. For the first two minutes of this fight, excuse me, of this round, Charon actually did win the round, so he might actually, actually have a round under his belt here just for the pure fact that Char uh, Lopez seemed to take it off. I heard what you said, Bernie. I just didn't react. All right, now, here's Lopez taking it up a notch. Lopez swarming. Look at Charon take punches. Lopez winging it away. And the bell swing. Take a look at where that cut showed up. A little bit of a headbutt in the ninth round. Just a straight lead in. Oh, and bang. Boy. Now, see, I don't think a point should be taken there because that wasn't intentional. He was just throwing a punch to the body, had his head down, and Ricardo Lopez didn't block his head. And even though it's accidental, uh, the guy who wasn't injured gets a point deducted. That's the WBC rules. It's a quirk of the WBC uh, rules and regulations. Uh, the biggest thing is what Bobby pointed out. You can't lose a fight because of it. That's, that's the biggest thing. There's a great close-up of uh, the focus of Ricardo Lopez as we enter round 11. He's got the hands up. Very determined. Look at him. He was already in the center of the ring when the bell sounded. And so was Sharon. Sharon has got to be given a great deal of credit. Boy, he put in a couple of really hard rounds here. No fear. Give it to him. Give it to him. No the, fear. The he last round right ended in a fury. I'm wondering if this one starts the same way that one ended. If it's up to Lopez, it will. Because he wants out of here. You think uh, when he woke up this morning, Lopez thought he was going to go 11 or 12 rounds uh, with you know, unheard of Mongo Sharon? The, the wonderful freshness of him is his modesty. He says, I expect to go 12 all the time. I'm surprised if I not got somebody. He's so modest and, and kind and nice. You almost think he was. I mean, who's writing this guy's material? He's so good. It's a little off and any. Mother Teresa, I think. You must give credit to the Thai fighter, Mongo Sharon. Great defensive by there by Sharon. He keeps his hands up pretty tight. Moves out of the way. Little side to side. Little bubble body movement. Oh, there's a beautiful shot by Ricardo Lopez. Another right cross to the uh, left side of the face of Sharon. Quick! Bloody nose of Sharon. 
bloody right eye area of uh, Lopez, the blood streaking down the right side of his face. You know, if you sit there and talk to Cerrone, he looks like he's about eight years old, soft, mild, soft-spoken, but I'll tell you what, he's a tough little guy. These are jarring shots, too, by Lopez. First the right hook, then the right uppercut, first to the head, then to the body, and Sharon just stands right in there. He's all bent over, ready for an uppercut. I don't know why Ricardo isn't thrown out in there, because he's all bent over, ready for it. Lopez ready continues, for it. continues to score with combinations to the head. And he is just Break. surgically taking Sharon apart here, but uh, Sharon, although showing some of the wear and tear, showing a lot of heart. Right, he's still here fighting. You know, it's, it's one of the better things about boxing, and no matter how many years you spend in it. Oh, oh. look out, he's, he staggered Sharon with a, an overhand right. And he went to the body, something like good experience, solid fighters. Heard a guy to the head go right to the body. And Lopez, a good finisher. Let's see how he deals with this situation. The crowd getting behind Lopez. To the head of Sharon, but Sharon with some courage. Not only courage, but he has a good chin because he's been hit clean. But this is a heroic yeah, effort right. by the Thai fighter. And this isn't a fresh chin getting hit with those shots. This is 11 rounds in. He just walked into a straight right. Sharon looks like he's ready to go, but he stays up on his feet. 15 seconds to go in the 11. Lopez wants to end it right now. Right. Wow, what bravery on the part of Sharon. Another straight right hand by Lopez. Lopez saying to himself, what's holding this guy up? Two beautiful body shots. Combination that unbelievable. Wow. Our translator left Bang Lampu. Well, very, very tough fight. 11 rounds of uh, sensa sensation with the Thai boy doing all his, all his best and all his gut. So it's going to be very, very wonderful fight for the Thai boy because he's very, very young and inexperienced. This is the final round for you. The second set is final for you. You don't have nothing to lose. Yeah, that's it. All right, let's, let's look and see where he got him in trouble, where, where Lopez finally puts in his Okay, let me get rid of this guy. And Sharon says, not me, pal. I'm going to stay here for everything. Look, right, left, hook, uppercut. Everything is raining in on Sharon, and he's still standing. What a gutty performance by this kid. This is only the fifth time of the career of Ricardo Lopez in 45 fights now that he has reached the 12th round. It's the fourth time in the much younger career of Mongo Sharon. Round 12 for the WBC Strawway title. A gutty effort by the challenger from Thailand. Oh, oh, oh. Lopez just wailing away, pushing Sharon back with devastating shots, wicked shots, upstairs and down. Sharon continues to stay up. You know, it's just sheer, it's just sheer guts now. He's swinging for home runs as Lopez is just sheer guts. It's keeping Sharon in there. These are Ruthian blasts by Lopez. Yeah, but re remember, he's, uh, Sharon's throwing a few back himself. He's not just standing there. He's, Ruthian he's, blasts, I like that. You've you got to watch out for him. You've got to watch out for Sharon. This thing's not over by a long shot. Look at that, he's still in there. We approach two minutes remaining in the 12th and final round. Straight right hand again by Lopez. That's been his bread and butter along with the uppercut. Ricardo's looping it a little bit because Sharon does keep the hands up pretty tight, so he's looping it a little over the top and a little around the side, almost in a reverse bolo or a right hook. Sharon's got to be exhausted. Taking a pounding. What punishment from Lopez? Well, if you can say you can hold your head high after a fight like this, he can hold it up high. He should take this film home and show it to all of us, to the nation. He can hold it up high, but it's still going to hurt. Here comes Sharon, straight left. Some shots. Sharon's not over, I'm telling you. But back comes Ricardo Lopez. See, Sharon doesn't have the guns that Ricardo Lopez has. I imagine if he did what a fighter he could be. Break! Well, he's got the same heart. He's got the same guts. Lopez has had two knockout wins in the 12th round of his career. He's got 45 seconds remaining. Oh, a 
Again, a twisting right uppercut by Lopez, followed by a left. Stutter step by Lopez, boring in. Uppercuts, trying to end it right here with 30 seconds. Clean hooks, and this guy's still here. That's four right hands in a row. And he comes four. back with a right hook of his own, Sharon. Oh, my goodness, what the... Performance by Sharon. When you least expect it, a great fight breaks up. <laughs> well, this one was over a long time ago, but what a fight. What a credit. Oh, and that is it. Great fight. Even Jay Nady agrees. Great fight, as you can hear him say. What an effort by Mongo Sharon comes over to embrace. Ricardo Lopez. Not many people expected this one to go the distance, that's for sure. Well, there you saw several things. One of them is that Lopez, even when he gets cut and when he gets in, into Great some job. modicum of trouble, fights and fights hard and keeps on going and looks for the knockout to the 12th. Beautiful. And what you can good see about Sharon is all, is all good. There's nothing bad. One look from that last blasting round, and you can see that the, the intent on Lopez was to finish this in the 12th. He didn't want to ha hang this over. He is a proud man. He wants to knock out, but he can't get it because Sharon is there taking the punches and punching back. Well conditioned and tough and durable. Conditioning, Bobby, conditioning. It's so important, and this kid has got the heart of a champion. Uh, it, it, you have to go, go some to see an attack that hard, not net a knockout for, for Ricardo Lopez. I bet his hands are sore today. But Small even in, uh, in defeat, uh, the stock of Mongol Sharon going up. Oh, absolutely. I believe that he has to go up. And I think you'll see him knocking on someone's door in the not.